Ukraine now accusing Russia of holding its people hostage as well. But the biggest news coming out of this meeting today is the president expressing his concerns over food shortages. Joining us live now to discuss this and what this means to you and your money is CEO of Sachuk Wealth, Terry Sachuk. Terry, thanks for joining us here on News On. Always a pleasure to have you back. It's great to see you, Miranda. So, Terry, I want to first play what the president had to say about this during a press conference at a NATO summit. This was in Brussels, Belgium, and then get your reaction. Okay, I guess we're going to try to get to that uh, soundbite coming up in a minute. Uh, very dramatic delay, uh, but I, I can assure you it was pretty dramatic to hear those words coming from the president. So, Terry, the president uh, basically referred to Ukraine and Russia as essentially the breadbasket, if you will, during this press briefing to Europe. But the White House maintains that we here in America are unlikely to face a food shortage. Do we have that soundbite? I believe we do, correct? Nothing more to report. With regard to food shortage, yes, we did re re so talk about food shortages. And, uh, and it's going to be real. The, the price of these sanctions is not just imposed upon Russia. It's imposed upon an awful lot of countries as well, including European countries and our country as well. So, as I mentioned, Terry, he's basically referring to, you know, and we've known this for a while as we've seen wheat prices go up because that is a large part of what Ukraine and Russia, um, you know, transport. And that's one of their biggest exports there. But do you agree with the assessment, this coming from Jen Psaki, the White House press secretary, saying that, you know, that is in regards to Europe and other countries, that we are unlikely to be impacted from that. But we're already seeing many of our shelves empty due to the supply and chain crisis. What, what are your thoughts? I, I don't really believe a whole lot of what Jen Psaki says. Um, so I, I'll just discount that. A lot of what she said isn't going to happen or hasn't happened actually has. Look, there, there's a few issues here. It's not just wheat, Miranda. There are second and third order consequences of the actions we've taken um, in, you, you know, as far as Russia and Ukraine are concerned. Um, and these are going to hurt real people. Europe definitely has the bigger problem. And it's not just wheat. It's seed oils, um, phosphates coming out of China. Uh, there's a shortage there. So that makes fertilizer. So anything that needs fertilizer, which also includes right. things here in the United States. Right. So are we going to see a food shortage? I don't know. But I would tell you this. It's not a bad idea to have about 90 days worth of food stored up in your home just in case. And if nothing else, you're going to buy it at a cheaper price today than you'll pay for it in 60 or 90 days from now. All right. Well, speaking of food shortages, Tennessee's Governor Bill Lee uh, proposing a 30 day Texas grocery suspension, which he says could save consumers 50 million dollars. He just announced this yesterday that he'll include again that 30 day holiday in his 2022-21 budget amendment, which is set to be delivered next week. Now, roughly a dozen states are proposing uh, sending tax rebate checks, if you will, to the residents to help offset the highest inflation that we've seen in four decades. Meanwhile, a number of states are looking to cut gas taxes, a, a, you know, number of ways to try to combat rising inflation because we're seeing surges in rent, surges in gas prices and electric bills. We're running tight on time, but I do want to get your reaction. Could any of this help offset what we're seeing when it comes to these rising costs? And should more states continue to do so? I think it's going to make it worse. You have to decrease demand if you want to bring prices down. But if you subsidize everybody and don't lower demand, it just has more money chasing fewer goods. It's just actually going to, it's going to do the opposite long term of what they want. These politicians are pandering. They have no idea how to fix the problem that they've created. So you're saying these are a short term solution that could lead to a much bigger problem down the line. Real quickly, uh, the majority of Americans say they didn't uh, blame the president for high gas prices, but they're giving his economic leadership very low marks. Obviously, fears of inflation, about seven in 10 Americans, according to uh, the latest poll, say the nation's economy is in bad shape. Uh, last 20 seconds, yes or no, uh, should Americans be pointing the finger towards the Biden administration when it comes to record inflation? Uh, there's no question. I mean, not all of it, but everything related to Russia right now, 
uh, what's going on with the way that we've treated that situation. And I, we could do a whole hour on that topic, but there's so many second and third order consequences that are gonna hurt real Americans and it is absolutely their fault. We're gonna continue obviously to follow this story and also talk about solutions uh, as well. So Terry Sachik, thanks so much. Always a pleasure to have you. Thanks, Miranda. Good to see you as always.